Hello, and welcome to the eTech Podcast with me, your host, Ryan Morn. I have been involved in the development of electrified vehicles and machines since 2005 as an engineer and a business leader. This podcast is the product of my passion for electric and autonomous vehicle technology. I'm here to share knowledge from some of the world's leading experts, as well as my own insights. Join me as we accelerate the transition to cleaner, safer and smarter vehicles and grow the industry around the world. So the podcast is really meant to be about technical things to do with electrification of vehicles and other forms of transport. Um, we, we really weren't trying to do general news with this because there are basically other far better news uh, podcasts and vlogs and things out there, uh, particularly the excellent EV News Daily by Martin Lee. What a, a tremendous podcast that is. Um, made a point of listening to that now. But today really was the sort of um, it's the final thing for me. We just had to do something because what a two weeks it's been. And I've been thinking about doing this for a while, but something else just keeps coming every single day. So first, uh, we had a couple of weeks ago the announcement from RIMAC that they'd secured as part of a funding round a 10% investment in the business from Porsche. So no sums were, um, no sums were published for that. Um, but this is a really, really significant move, both for Porsche and also from, for RIMAC. So basically, RIMAC is a, a fairly young um, company in Croatia manufacturing EVs. They've got an awesome product, Concept 1. The Concept 2 is coming. Um, and it really says a lot about the level of technology uh, and what RIMAC have achieved, that Porsche has come along and made a 10% investment in them. So that, in itself, is a massive piece of news. Then, a couple of days after that, we had the announcement from TM4 that the uh, major tier one Dana had acquired a majority stake in their business. So again, TM4 and is an EV powertrain company. They make high power motor drives and inverters, uh, particularly for the commercial vehicle market. Um, they also they do some passenger car things as well, but they're really they're best known for EV drives for buses and trucks. So that valued their business at something like 300 million Canadian dollars. So that was a huge deal. Uh, to be honest, I had been expecting something to come for a while um, from TM4. I had not been expecting it to be Dana that bought them. Um, I said a few times, I was uh, sort of half thinking that someone like Cummins would come in and buy TM4. Uh, TM4 do an awful lot of work with Cummins um, in North America. Um, but the Dana acquisition was a surprise to me, um, but fantastic, fantastic news. Then over the weekend, we had the um, the Pikes Peak uh, race where the Volkswagen IDR absolutely smashed the Pikes Peak record. So what a, what a fantastic example. Volkswagen putting a lot of money into promoting themselves in a more positive light um, to do with electrification. Uh, since the Dieselgate scandal. So, you know, hey, I think that's a great use of resources. It did a lot to promote the benefits of electrification and really what you can do within with an EV. So then that's, you know, three pretty major things. But then just a couple of days after that, we had BP announcing that they're buying Chargemaster. Again, massive deal. Chargemaster are not a huge company. Um, based in the UK, they've been operating and installing charging points, so public charging infrastructure uh, for a number of years now. Uh, BP paid £130 million for that business. So again, massive deal, absolutely massive deal. Really puts uh, BP into the EV charging market. They're, they've got big plans to put charging infrastructure into their retail business, into the um, BP petrol stations. Um, that was, you know, we've, we've seen a few other things like that happening. Shell made some investments. Uh, there's some other things going on with the fuel retailers and oil companies. Um, but that was a massive deal from BP. So if that wasn't enough, then Porsche, so another Volkswagen Group company, uh, they decided they would take their 919 hybrid um, to the long circuit at the Nürburgring, um, and they absolutely blew the doors off the lap record uh, for the long circuit. So it's 12.9 miles circuit, and they shaved a minute, almost a minute, off the previous lap record, uh, which has stood for a, a, quite a number of years. So um, absolutely incredible achievement there. And interestingly, the, the current lap record uh, around the Nürburgring long circuit for a road legal car is also held by an electric vehicle, uh, the Neo EP9, which is a, a bit of a weapon, fantastic bit of kit. So then, um, then following that, 
we had the big announcement from Tesla. They finally hit the 5,000 Model 3 per week target. So that's a really big deal for them. There's a lot of naysayers. You know, everyone knows Tesla has been massively shorted as a company. So that's where um, basically it's almost like anti-investment. So I think possibly might go down as one of the biggest wastes of capital in human history, where people have speculated that Tesla's uh, share price is overvalued. So they bought in um, with a view that they're going to profit when the share price drops. Uh, unfortunately, I think a lot of those people will be feeling a little bit sore at the moment. Um, so I, I basically, I never had any doubts that they would hit 5,000 a week. They've done it. Um, some people are saying, oh, it's not sustainable. Uh, they've used some unconventional methods. Um, you know what? I think uh, I've, I've been in the automotive industry for quite a long time. I've seen car manufacturers finish production builds in the car park. I've been involved in installing components in a vehicle manufacturer's car park before. I've seen uh, car manufacturers hire old aircraft shelters, um, you know, air, aircraft hangars, sorry, um, and finishing builds of vehicles in there. Um, you know, so really the, the, the approach of setting up a supplementary production line, it, that I don't think that's particularly uh, that much of a new approach, certainly not such a big deal as some people are making um, a, a noise about. You know, they've, they've done some testing. Um, they probably overcommitted to the automation in the main uh, plant, um, so it allowed them to do some more flexible production um, on this more manual uh, assembly line in, in a temporary structure, um, a.k.a. a tent outside. So pretty massive sets of news there. But then finally, the one thing that then inspired me to do this news-based podcast. Uh, so last night we had the news that Cummins have made another acquisition in the EV space. Um, so they've bought an American company called Efficient Drive Trains, uh, also known as EDI. This is uh, Cummins' third based XEV related acquisition um, in the last 12 months. They bought um, the Bramo uh, battery business. Um, earlier this year, they bought the Johnson Matthew battery systems business in the UK. And then now they've bought the EDI business in North America. So EDI, absolutely fantastic bunch of guys. They've been doing systems integration and conversion work in the, the heavy duty space. So trucks and buses have been really, really successful doing that. And now Cummins have added that capability to their business. Um, so it's a really smart move by Cummins and something that um, I think they will, uh, they'll benefit from moving forward. And it really cements the moves that they've been making to um, acquire the skills and the talent needed um, so they can pivot their business away from being just a purely diesel engines company into more of a power systems company and have a, have a broader offer in the electrification market. So that's it. I was just thinking, wow, what a couple of weeks. Every day there's been something massive coming out. I'm sure there'll be something big tomorrow coming out. Um, there's, a, there's been a huge amount of news in the EV space, all tending to be very positive and pointing in the direction of the EV market um, becoming more mainstream. Um, the big tier ones and OEMs taking positions in some of the smaller startup companies. Um, EVs really starting to be put on the map. Um, so that's it. That's it for me uh, for today. We'll be back soon with something a little bit more technical, but I just thought I had to share that with you. Thanks a lot for listening. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Hit like, give us a rating. Um, remember, we will answer questions. So any questions that you have, feel free to send those in. Um, you can find the contact details below. Thanks a lot and have a great day.